Let's see here. Cute cat videos, Black Hanekawa, the majority of Miyuki Sawashiro's filmography. Yeah, too much to choose from. Let's just tackle this episode normally and... Oh wait, Cat Food by Hatsune Miku. Yeah, that would actually be a really appropriate opener for this. Darn it! So yeah, this week's episode is a Yukari one, where she turns into a cat. Why? Because she headbutted her animal crystal friend and switched bodies with it. Yeah, we're going with that cliche. Seriously, if it were that easy to switch bodies, a lot of Precure seasons would open up very differently. Uh, no! That's not the kind of reaction you should have after becoming a furry. It should be more along the lines of something like this. Okay, okay, I'm fine, I'm fine. But yeah, Yukari's a cat, one that's much bigger than the animal crystal, but why question anything at this point? Like, how does the animal crystal know how to use doorknobs if it's never had opposable thumbs? <laughs> Huh, I see somebody's a subscriber to Valsy's videos. By the way, sardines are named after an island called Sardinia in the Mediterranean Sea. Meanwhile, Yukari ends up interacting with the three-star cat and her gang. Apparently, they've recently been having turf wars with Pecorine's fairy friends. Funny, you'd think the squirrels would have been a more likely threat. We'll have to re-destabilize their economy, refocus labor class outrage from upper to middle, foster a coup, and install a compliant regime. But nope, next week's gonna be a Himari and Daoi episode. Huh, that should actually be kind of interesting. Anyway, while Yukari ends up becoming the negotiator for the cats, the fairies elect Shiel as their representative. <laughs> Don't make me say it! Her plan is to use a peace offering of cat safe sweets that apparently the professionally trained chef knows how to make. Oh come on, you won't find any professional chefs who would actually make their own pet food. Except for Elton Brown. My god, between this and Beanie Up Archer, is there nothing this man can't do? Pinch of paprika and some cashmere saffron. And there you have it, Eggs Woodhouse. Thanks, Alan. All seems to go well, until a familiar looking purple fog grows in. Yeah, apparently Diablo was the source of all the tension between the two sides by darkening the hearts of the fairies and the cats. Okay, so does he or does he not need Kyakya to corrupt people and animals? I mean, last week, I assumed all the people in the park ate the Precure sweets, but these street cats clearly haven't consumed any sweets yet, and have likely only eaten trash for the past few days. Can Diablo just corrupt anyone as is, or is there just some dormant Kyakya in every living being, or am I just losing it at this point? Well, to resolve some of the tension, Yukari challenges Kyarin to a duel to decide ownership over the area. Kyarin reluctantly accepts, and we get... One of the better fight scenes in the anime, sadly. Hell, at least they actually throw punches or paw strikes in this fight. Yukari wins, but then orders both the fairies and the cats to vacate the area. Yeah, obviously she's acting the part of the villain to give both sides a common enemy to unite over. And to further drive home that point, she jumps off a cliff! Wait. I mean, yeah, I know there is actually something to the whole cats landing on their feet thing, but from that height, I'm pretty sure you'll die! Yukari, you've already pulled off this whole Kato thing. You don't have to actually go through with this Kato level act of stupidity. Still, at least we get a nice scene between her and Kyain, reminiscent of her saving Bipli a while back, before the cats and the fairies work together to save both of them. From there, a frustrated Diablo trio reveal themselves and try to skin the Peacemaker. Luckily, Xion and the rest of the Precure come in, and during the fight, the Animal Crystal and Yukari switch back. She transforms, we get some slight shell slash Yukari shipping, which Diablo doesn't approve of. Huh, figures he'd be more of an Akira Yukari shipper. The Precure purify the trio, but Diablo's main body remains intact as he had spent the entire episode incubating. Huh, would you look at that, he digivolved into Gurumon. Hey, still looks better than what most of the designs in Digimon Tri have devolved into. Oh boy, that's one ugly ass kitty. 
The episode ends with the fairies and cats burying their differences by partaking in sweets that probably taste like old tuna. Well, that was... nothing really much. I mean, I won't be totally negative towards this episode, but it is still mostly just fluff. Cute fluff, but fluff nonetheless. The concept of the Precure switching bodies with their fairy friends is nothing new, though Yukari does kind of change it up by being as cool as a cucumber throughout it. Her interactions with Chiel were also pretty nice, even if they were kind of a retread of all the stuff with Bipli, who sadly wasn't in this episode at all. But hey, at least they're proving their worth as Precure. Overall, a very middle of the world filler episode, though with this series likely entering into its third act, I think it's high time they started to pick things up. Sorry for the slight delay in videos, by the way. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know I spent my Thursday night getting this little beauty right here. Still, the Sinfo Gear review is almost done, and I should have it up later this week. And this episode also reminded me I should get back to work on my cooking videos. I'll probably work on Yukari's cat macarons after I finish Sinfo Gear. I have most of the footage recorded already. Until then, though, Feral for now, my friends, and. Ooh, I think a certain evil little space kitty has gotten into my house. Great, I need a new hat.